Hey, how's it going everyone? So in today's video, I kind of want to go over how I made these trees using 3D code in Blender. And as you can see, they're like super detailed. And I found this really cool workflow that has recently been working for me. And I just thought I'd share that with you guys. So in this quick little video, I'm going to go over my little process. And so usually it kind of starts with 3D code where I just model out my pieces. So I don't model out everything in 3D code. It's just the pieces that I will be using to make my trees right and then i use blender to like assemble everything together where i have an asset browser and uh, everything's textured and lit up so it's gonna be a time lapse video and i'm just gonna walk you guys through my entire process and so yeah hope you guys enjoy so when i started off doing this i started using the sphere tool and with the sphere you can literally just paint like these cylindrical looking shapes and making sure it's on the brush mode to where you get like a tapered effect where the harder you press the more thicker your volumes are going to be and the lighter you press the more thinner they're going to be this pressure sensitive and it's really good for tree trunks because you know nature is chaotic and you can get away with like all kinds of weird curves or whatnot and just call it a tree right because there isn't really like a perfect tree out there so i kind of played around with that idea and once i had some sort of like some sort of like volume going around i thought that it'd be nice to kind of just move it around add some branches here and there and also making sure that when i added my branches i made sure that they were on a separate layer because i'm thinking about like okay what are the pieces that i need and i want to easily like manipulate them and move them around inside of blender so you kind of have to reverse engineer your entire process when you're making like assets for kid bashing purposes for adding those branches i used a tool called spikes it was it's really cool i really i recently discovered it and you can literally like pull out these little edges that kind of look like you know tree branches of some sort so that helped a lot in getting those nice little branches and then um the also the other tool that i also discovered while working on this is uh i think it's called dang it I forgot it's called the rotation tool so it's called the the twist tool and after i was done making like one of my tree trunks i thought that i can use this tool to kind of like add a nice twist to my mesh and it's so powerful, like you can literally play around with the segments, the step scale, overlap. And it's just me like messing around with these values and moving my um, navigator as well, like my main cursor. And so you get really cool results. Sometimes on by default, it's really crazy. So you have to like adjust it a little bit more. But that's a, that's a tool that I recently got to play around with. And I thought that it would be nice to get some like, you know, curved looking tree branches, tree trunks as well. And then um, the other asset that I thought would be cool to make is just some tree roots of some sort. And for that, I used the snake tool and also the spike tools one more time. See, I did not know the spike tool existed. Before that, I was always using the snake tool. And with the snake tool, I was never getting those nice tapered edges. But with spikes, you know, it's, it's so cool. Like you get, you know, more something like hair like structures, which is really nice in my case right now. And once again, you know, making sure I'm keeping them on separate layers because that so that when I export them out and when I start kid bashing in Blender, I can like easily have them as separate models. Because when you make everything in one layer on your sculpt tree, and when you export it out, it's all one mesh. And then you can still separate it out in Blender, but you know, like, it takes you know a few extra steps to do that. So keeping that in mind, um, I tried to be as efficient as possible with this piece. And I would say in total, it took me maybe around four hours to make my final image, which I think is pretty good for the amount of t detail that I was able to put into this. Um, definitely, I would uh, you know recommend looking up some references as well. This, these, the ones that I came up with were pretty generic looking because I just wanted to like showcase this technique. But you know the opportunities are endless when you can know how to like work these tools every and all that. And once again, you know, tried to use the stencils as well to add some you know some sort of like little details up there also. And honestly, I didn't spend too much time in 3D code. I wanted to spend as less time as possible because, you know, in the past I've, I've done it where like I would make like massive kits inside of 3D code. But then when I export them out, it takes forever for me to export my models because there's a so dense, they're so high poly and my computer is like not strong enough to export them out. I had the exact same problem like last time I was working on a personal project. So these are all these are the only four models that I made inside of 3D code. And then when I bring them into Blender, I make sure I export them out as, as an FBX and also I'll decimate them a lot more inside of Blender. For those of you who don't know what decimation is, it's the process of like reducing your poly count and you kind of have to like eyeball it just to make sure that you're getting like less poly count but then also you're not losing a lot of detail as well. And so once I had the decimation part figured out, 
you know, I just threw in like a random, not a random, I think I found this really good uh, tree bark texture on, on Quixel Bridge, which worked really nicely with this. So you can either use Quixel Bridge or you can also use uh, textures.com. They got some pretty cool textures. This is it's a texture that I've, I kind of used once in the past. So I just knew that it's going to work really well with this. And uh, one thing I would also make sure is that I would UV unwrap it. And it's really simple. You don't have to like, you know, painstakingly like unwrap everything. If you just like go to edit mode, if you select your model, go to edit mode and then select all of your faces and then click U on your keyboard and hit smart UV project. That seems to work really well. You can also try the Q projection, um, but that works nice, nicely too. But I like using smart UV project for like, you know, more complex models. And then here I'm, I'm thinking of like, okay, now since I have the models themselves, I can like select parts of them and just kind of separate them out and just use them as separate pieces. So that's what I meant, right? If I wanted to, I could have done this inside of 3D code, but I decided not to do it because it would just be like, it would just add like extra meshes for no reason. Something that I can easily do in Blender while, you know, keeping everything like a little bit more uh, low poly as well. Not low poly, but like, you know, a little bit less, less intense, <laughs> if that makes sense. And so the goal was that, okay, I'm going to try to make like some more variations on the tree trunk as well. And I'm still keeping them very basic because when I started making my trees, I used this add-on called HardOps add-on. And there are two tools that I really like using from that add-on. It's the Twist 360 and the Radial Array, which kind of gave me some really cool looking uh, forms in like a very short amount of time. So I was thinking about that while I was making my kid bash set. I'm thinking like, okay, so I have to like start with like simple models and then I can definitely like, you know, bump them up when I started making my models themselves. And so here I also made an asset browser where I kind of saved all my models. That way I was just able to like drag and drop them. But yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Like see, like really quickly I was able to get like these cool transformations on my models. Essentially like the, the, the Twist 360, it kind of just like makes copies of your model and then it kind of rotates it. And you can like choose what axis you want it to rotate on. The same goes for the radial array as well. And I feel like it worked so well with these. And since they had like so much detail, I didn't have to like do any complex modeling inside of Blender. It was just a matter of like, you know, putting everything together. It's kind of like Lego, if that makes sense. And then here I was just like, this is my first tree that I was making. So it wasn't really, my personally wasn't my, my favorite one, but it was a chance for me to like uh, play around with these techniques, play around with my assets as well. And I highly recommend like making an asset browser, for, uh, asset library of your, of your stuff that we can like easily use it like in future projects. Um, it's something that I've done for the first time ever in this video. And it was so helpful because then I did not have to like, you know, append my files or copy paste them from different files. I could easily just like select them. Um, and there are tons of videos out there on how to like set up your asset library. I would definitely check them out. And for those of you who are wondering like why I did not uh, put any leaves, it's because this is more like a portfolio piece for me and I did not, the kind of mood I was going for is like, you know, dark, dark and gloomy mood and I didn't want to put any leaves on it. But the way you would put leaves, it's it's very easy. So you can do that inside of Blender by using a particle system. And there are tons of videos out there for it. So you can easily find one that you like. But essentially, uh, if you know how to put grass on, on ground by using like weight maps, it's a similar process. In, instead, it's going to be leaves. And usually, if you're doing it that way, I would recommend using like a 2D uh, PNG of some leaves instead of using like 3D models because particle systems really, it's really heavy on your scene every now and then. So you want to make sure you're not like killing your computer by doing this if you have a good computer then like you know disregard whatever i said but if you're like on a budget and have like you know low specs then i would definitely you know be smart about it right and this is what this project was right i mean in the past i've always done it where um i just make everything in 3d code and then when i export it out it just takes forever it takes so long to like reduce my poly count and then export them out in blender and so i thought that okay let me just do the bare minimum inside of 3d code and then i can just like fix everything in blender and you know, this just proved that the power of Blender is just so good. You can just assemble everything all together. And so this is the one thing that I tell everyone, right? You know, people ask me that, you know, uh, some people like, they think I'm like a pro in 3D code, which I am not, <laughs> I'm still learning the program myself. Every now and then it's like a new tool that I learned and I'm like, oh, wow, this is awesome. And the one thing that I've learned is that, you know, 3D code is good for making models, um, but you won't, you'll never make your whole scene in 3D code. I would not recommend doing that because it's not efficient at all. And then for kid bashing purposes, you kind of have to break it down in your head, reverse engineer the pieces you need for your model as well. That way you're not like spending too much time, you know, making stuff in 3D code. And you know, if there's something you can make easily in Blender, just make it in Blender. You don't have to use 3D code for it. Like for a lot of like hard surface things, I, I like to use Blender because it's, you know, it's easy to like model like boxy shapes. And in 3D code, kind of like 
naturally softens everything out a lot so sometimes it's hard to like maintain those hard edges so i mean you can get away with it i mean at the end of the day you know here's the thing this is concept art right if i don't have that nice crisp edge i can always just like go to photoshop and just put like hard lines on it like hard arm brush that's it you got it done so you just have to like play around with it and honestly i what I, the note the trend that i've noticed is that with 3d code since we're dealing with voxels and volumes and we're constantly like going back and forth with our voxel size it tends it tends to like mess up your creases a little bit so you have to like be aware of those little things and that's why like for like hard surface stuff you know i, I, I like usually stick to blender but then again you know with, with 3d code if it's something that's like semi hard surface with some like with some like soft edges and things like that like organic hard surface if that makes sense because a lot of a lot of like the the lab stuff that i did in my previous videos like some of them were made inside of 3d code is because you know i was able to like get a lot of detail a lot faster inside and as opposed to having that in blender so it honestly it's like a case by case situation sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but yeah, so right now, you know, I'm working on my third tree. And as you can see, you know, it's just rinse and repeat at this point. And I um, highly recommend getting the hard ops add on because it's it's literally it's, it's been a game changer for me, honestly. And uh, many times, you know, I can get like really cool, happy accidents. But then one but then the, the other thing that I also figured out while I was working on this is that happy accidents can only get you so far. Right. So it's always a good idea to have like a good grasp of the software in general. Because then that way you can like use the tool to make what you want and you're not really like being controlled by the software instead you are controlling the software and you're making you know the things that you want to make and um the, the other thing that i also what now looking back at it i feel like i should have decimated my models a little bit more because when you use like good pbr textures the detailing is just there i mean it's gonna work either or right and so <clears throat> and so just be mindful of those of your like poly count pretty much Especially if you're like rendering everything in 4K, I would definitely be mindful of all of that, cause um, cause I rendered this out in 4K and uh, it took a while. I think it took almost an hour for me to render everything out. So and so like when when that when that was happening, I was like, okay, I should probably like you know not do this next time. Maybe I should like decimate a little bit more and experiment and see what works and what does not work. And then here, like you know, I did the same thing, right? The branches that I made, I was able to like cut them out. And if you've made it this far, definitely subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what you want me to cover next. I'd be more, more than happy to like uh, cover more stuff inside 3D code or Blender in general or just concept art. But you know, nearing to my fourth tree, I felt like I had already warmed up a lot and I kind of liked the design on number two. And so I decided to kind of go in that direction for the fourth one as well. And I do plan on making like a full environment scene with this, with one of these trees being my main focal point. Right now, my money's on the second one or the fourth one. I might as well just like merge them together and just make something more, more appealing at that point. But this is what it is pretty much. And uh, for those of you wondering why I'm not showing my face in this video is because I was currently sick. I had the flu and because of that, my nose is all red, my eyes are puffy and whatnot. So I, would, I didn't feel super comfortable showing my sicky face. But I'll definitely be back in the next one with more stuff for you guys. You know what's funny? Like after like working on this piece, whenever I like drive by trees, I can't see them the same way anymore. It's like, oh, look at these branches. Oh my God. If only I had this one reference image of this one tree, my stuff would have looked so much better. And so now my phone is like filled with like pictures of trees for like future reference. <laughs> this is amazing. I love being an artist sometimes. So I was pretty much done with the four trees that I had. Uh, the next thing that I did, I wanted to create a ground plane. Kind of wanted to add like a watery texture to it. So for that, I just used a noise texture and plugged it into a color ramp and then put that into roughness. So whatever is black on my roughness map, that's going to be shiny. And whatever is white is going to be like, you know, matte, not shiny at all. So I thought it'd be nice to have that kind of noise up there. And then I just played around with it a little bit. I thought that maybe I can put some concrete texture or maybe just some grassy texture. But then I was just scared. I was like, I don't want to put like too much detail on the ground because my main focus are these four assets, the four props that I made. So then I just went with like a simple, like a simple like ground texture with it towards the end. This seemed to do the trick. And, uh, and then I rendered it. And I also used the physical starlight, physical atmosphere add-on, which is also really good for lighting. So definitely um, hard ops and physical starlight. These are the two add-ons that I use in this video. Hard ops for like the modeling part, not the modeling, I would say the assembling part, I guess. 
and then physical starlight for lighting. And then I recently started using the camera raw filter on my render and it's so powerful you can like tweak your colors and whatnot and I thought it added like a lot of like extra interest to my model it just like pushed it a little bit you know it spiced it up a little bit which I really appreciated like the color of the branches were like very grayish and so after playing around with some of the settings on camera raw I was able to get like a blue like a brownish tint on it which I really like. And then I also like had a render pass of my silhouettes. I think if you use like the environment render pass, you get a render pass of your of everything like except the environment. And then I thought it'd be nice to like change the cloud because it was like pretty generic looking. And I just used, uh, just used an image that I found on Google, honestly. And, and honestly, that was it. At this point in Photoshop, I was just like cleaning up some of my edges and whatnot. And um, you know, adding some more highlights here and there, just trying to give it that painterly effect. But this is roughly, you know, like I said, this roughly took me around close to maybe four hours, which I thought was really good. Personal record, honestly, not gonna lie, because you know, I've spent like hours on 3D code just to like just to like figure stuff out. And uh, I feel like this workflow worked so well for me. Like it was so efficient. I saved so much time. I did not waste any time. Like you know, just exporting stuff out. I will say like. The render time was pretty high, so if I'm adding that, you know, let's just do five hours, I guess. But honestly, if I could have just taken a screenshot of my viewport, let's say if it was, if it was for, for production, I could have just done that. But since this was like more geared towards my portfolio, I wanted to have like a nice 4K render. And I had all the time in the world anyway to work on this, so I just did it that way. And so uh, here's the final result. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a thing or two in this video. And I appreciate every single one of you coming by and checking my videos. This is still a fairly new channel. I'm still like really small, really tiny. And so everyone's support means the world to me. And we recently crossed 500 subscribers, which is crazy. You know, I'm going to over exaggerate and say that I actually have half a thousand subscribers now <laughs> to make it look like something cool. But once again, I appreciate everyone up here and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.